this year, I put out a video here on YouTube where I was talking about a sort of cheat code for rhythm changes. And the basic idea was that for the A sections, we could essentially think of the entire A as a B flat major, even a B flat major scale. But what I wanna to do today is look a little bit more closely, take one more step closer to understanding more about the depth of rhythm changes by providing a few key essential other elements as part of the DNA of this kind of chord structure. So let's do that now. Welcome to Learn Jazz Bass with Matt Rubicki. I'm glad that you're here. As I said, um, what I wanna do is just add a little bit more information to that idea of the cheat code, specifically talking about things that are happening in the A sections. You remember that rhythm changes is a series of chords of a, har a harmonic progression of form that is based on a tune from the Gershwins called I Got Rhythm. And um, that progression that was written by the Gershwins isn't even exactly what we're playing now, nor was it even close to then. For example, in the swing era, it was very common to have the A sections get close to this idea I started with in the Rhythm Changes Cheat Code, where the entirety of the A section is basically just B flat major, um, and that you could just play B flat major scale throughout the whole thing and kind of make it work. Uh, but what I wanna do, as I say, even though it's not exactly the same, I wanna approach the skeleton of what is played now on the variety of things that can happen on rhythm changes. Add a little bit more information that's gonna get you a little bit closer to playing authentically. Some really important anchor points. So let's take a look at the A sections in a couple of different sections of themselves. The first four bars Yes, you can still think of those first four bars as basically B flat major. But importantly, there is really an oscillation between B flat major and F7. So the one chord and the five seven. There is a, that internal sense of tension and release that I didn't really talk about much in that other video. So basically we've got the first bar is essentially B flat major. And then in the second bar, and fourth bar, there is an F7 of some kind or that dominant sound of some kind usually. So those are anchor points there in those first four bars. Let me just play roots and see if you can tell what I'm talking about. We'll do real slow, just root quarter notes. One, two, three, four. That's it, right? But I'm sure that if you've played a lot, you can already tell like where that tension wants to go, right? Um, so that is essentially something to note of those first four bars, that there is the sound of a dominant in there. If you listen for it, and you should, and you should play it. Um, it generally occurs in bars two and bar four. You can do a whole bunch of things in those first four bars. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, I'm excited to share that I've got a new course that is coming out on November 4th. It's called Jazz Bass 101, Walking Essential Tunes. And one of the five main topics that we're covering in the course is rhythm changes. And we're gonna do a super deep dive into this form so that we can understand it really, really well and be able to play at the whole host of variations that are available even though I can't get to them all because it's sort of impossible, it's endless, the kinds of combinations you can do. Nonetheless, let's come back to today and continue to talk about these sections that we're talking about. Um, so we've got in bars one to four, one and five chord. In bar, so let's talk about bars five to eight. In bar five, yes, you can, there is sometimes beat one and two can be B flat major. But more often than not, bar five is really a dominant sound preparing for bar six. Bar six is the four chord. So we're, if we're in B flat, rhythm changes is usually in B flat, doesn't have to be. The four chord is E flat. So in bar six, it goes to E flat. Now remember I said bar five prepares for that. What is the dominant chord 
of the four chord? What is the dominant chord of E flat? If you're an E flat major, the dominant chord is B flat seven. And so that is the sound that usually happens in bar five is something going, alluding to a B flat dominant. So we're sort of going from B flat major for the first four bars, and then it changes to B flat dominant in bar five, which leads us to bar six, the four chord in bar six on the downbeat, which is E flat six or E flat major seven sometimes, um, but a, an E flat major sound there. Now what happens next in that bar, in bar six, is something that is important to note. And I wanna thank John Goldsby for bringing this to our attention in a post he did some years ago, and it really made me realize and see it in a new way. On beat three of bar six, there are a variety of options. Sometimes if you play two of those options at the same time, then they're, they're gonna make a bad conflict. They are not gonna sound good together. Some of them will, a couple of them won't. The options of beats three and four for bar six vary from playing um, the, the, the five chord there, like what happens in the swing air where the whole A sections are um, just B flat major basically. So you could play an F7 there, that's one option. You could also play an A flat seven that is close to the original chords that the Gershwins wrote. So bar six, E flat major, A flat seven. Some people also play, again, beat three in bar six, E flat minor something, E flat minor six, E flat minor seven. Those are close to, especially the E flat minor six is close to an A flat seven because it shares the G flat and the C that are in the A flat seven as well. So those two sort of work together. The F7 doesn't really work with that A flat, can sort of work, sort of work. It does, it's not great. But A flat, uh, A flat seven, E flat minor can work together. F7 is an ish sort of, kind of can work. The one where the real potential for conflict comes is that one of the other options is to play E diminished seven there. E diminished as a passing sort of chord, a chromatic approach chord to the next bar. If you play F7, A flat seven, E flat minor seven, and somebody else, any of those choices, and somebody else is playing E diminished seven, that's not gonna sound good. You've got a whole bunch of notes in all those chords that do not mesh well together. The good news is it happens fast, it goes by quickly, and most people will forgive it. Most people honestly can't hear it, to be honest. But of course, we're striving to be as sort of accurate and authentic as we can. So what do we do in that instance? There's all these options. How do we know what to play? Well, the first thing is to actually use your words. <laughs> That's the cliche thing we say to kids, right? Talk to your bandmates. What are you doing in this particular section of this rhythm changes that we're playing? If you don't have time for that, which is often the case, or the tune gets called on the bandstand and there's not time to communicate between you and the piano player or the guitar player, listen like crazy and try to figure out what they're playing. Look at them. If you can put yourself next to the pianist and see their left hand and see what the chords they're playing or try to figure it out, that's a huge help. Ray Brown himself told me directly, try to stand next to the piano player, so I try to. <laughs> so you wanna see what they're playing. Um, and otherwise just listen like crazy. Last thing is, as I say, it goes by really fast. It can be forgiven, but we don't, we don't wanna try to just give that away necessarily. We do wanna try to figure out what's happening there. So again, bar five, some kind of dominant sound leading to bar six, which is the four chord. The second half of bar six is gonna have some kind of different thing that's gonna happen, a potential for damage. F7, A flat seven or E flat minor, or E diminished seven. Then in bars seven and eight, there's not a difficult thing happening and there's not a lot of potential for conflict, but there are different choices based on the context of where you are in the song. So if you're in the first A section or you are going on to, the, to the, repeat the whole form again, if you're in the last A section and the, the tune is not ending, 
there's generally a turnaround, which you will remember is some kind of sound that prepares a bit of tension to return us back to the home sound. Generally, we think 2-5 in that, and that can happen here in bars uh, 7 and 8. It can also be 3-6-2-5 or 1-6-2-5, some kind of turnaround that prepares us to go back to an A section or continue on to the second A section or um, uh, continue on with solos. That's another option too. If the soloist is continuing, then you want to put a, 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 a turnaround there to keep the sort of feel going. On the second A section though, at that point, we want to sort of close the loop. We want to return to the home sound because we are then closing that little mini chapter of the tune and we're preparing for the bridge, which is a different sound entirely. So when you're at the end of the tune and the end of the second A section, you want to play B flat major, something in that B flat major sound. The bridge, I don't have a whole lot new to say about it in this particular thing. It's still a cycle of fourths. Um, it goes, it starts on D7, generally, if you're in B flat. And if you, if you want to think backwards from a two five or from the five, the five is F7. That happens at the end of the bridge. What is a dominant chord leading to F7? C7. What is a dominant chord leading to C7? G7. What is a dominant chord leading to G7? D7. So there's a variety of ways to think about it. You could say it's a cycle of force that starts from the third degree of the sc whatever scale key you're in, D7, G7, C7, F7, goes up in fourths. There are a lot of variations there. As I say, we'll go into them in this course on November 4th that I'm releasing uh, Jazz Bass 101, Walking Essential Tunes. So let me just play like super, super basic, lots of roots and stuff like that, walking line, quarter notes, basic things, to try to sort of hear this movement all together, sort of, you know, assembled all together. So let's play very, very slowly. One, two, uh, three, four. Five, one. Five, one dominant, four. Diminished, three, six, two, five, one, five, one, five, dominant one, one, A flat, two, five, one, going to the bridge. dominant, four, A flat, two, five, one. Now, of course, I ended it there, so I, you know, close the loop, as I say, uh, we're trying to go back to that home sound. So hopefully this made a little bit of sense to you and that it will provide some information when you play a rhythm changes and sort of take it up to the next level. There's a lot more variations to discuss, and I hope that you'll join me in that course to talk about them. But nonetheless, this stuff should really get you far if you really look at that underlying structure of the rhythm changes and really have those as anchor points. It is going to allow you to be able to play a rhythm changes much more effectively and authentically. Thanks for joining me today. As always, I'm glad that you came. Check below for PDFs and so on. Like, subscribe. Always remember, straight ahead and strive for tone.